Okay, I want to take you back uh, again to the scriptures here. This time I'm in the book of Jude. Uh, I'm at verse 3, reading this out of the Amplified Version, which says, Beloved, my whole concern was to write you in regard to our common salvation. But I found it necessary and was impelled to write you and urgently appeal to you and exhort you to contend for the faith which was once for all handed down to the saints, the faith which is the sum of the Christian belief, which was delivered verbally to the holy people of God. Verse 4, a key verse here. For certain men have crept in stealthily. Certain men have crept in stealthily. See, this is the way Satan does it. He creeps in stealthily. He comes in subtly and seduces you and charms you. See, Satan doesn't show up at your front door with a pitchfork and a red suit. No, Satan shows up as a, as a hot young chick, as a handsome young man, as a everyday blue-collar worker. See, he, he will show up in different shapes and forms. See, he, he knows how to hit each group. See, maybe for one group, it's the hot young chick that gets, gets them foaming at the mouth and puts their guard down. Oh, they're so attractive. Oh, surely they're harmless. Or maybe it's the handsome young man with the nicely uh, uh, cut and shaved beard. Maybe it's that individual that gets you to get your guard down. That way you start forsaking what the scriptures are saying because your guard's down and now you just trust the individual because... They're easy on your eyes. Or maybe it's the blue collar worker and the truck driver who's rough and tough and reminds you of your dad. Oh, he, he reminds me of so-and-so. And oh, I, I think I'll put my guard down on this individual. See, Satan knows how to work each circumstance, each, each situation to get you to get your guard down. I want to take you here as I was sharing that. I want to take you to Ephesians chapter 6. Still reading this out of the uh, Amplified Version here. Which says, in conclusion, this is verse 10, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 out of the Amplified. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with Him. Draw your strength from Him. That strength which His boundless might provides. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God. The armor of a heavy armored soldier which God supplies. That you may be able to successfully stand up against all the strategies and deceits of the devil. Strategies and deceits. And see again, I say Satan has a deceit and a delusion for each circumstance and each, each situation. He knows how to work it. He knows how to work each individual. He knows how to work each group. He knows how to get you to let your guard down. Are you going to be that kind of person who lets your guard down? Are, are you going to let a nice, beautiful woman let your guard down? Is that, see, see, a lot of men, they're doing this today. They're letting their guard down. Their marriages are being broken up. Others, others it's women doing it. The, the women who are letting their, their guard down because of a nice, handsome man. They're forsaking the scriptures. They're not trusting the word anymore. Instead of trusting the word, they're trusting the, the word of an individual, of a character, of a personality. And see, and we're seeing this all, all over YouTube today. We're seeing people, instead of trusting God's word, they're trusting personalities. I call them personality cults. Lots of personality cults here on YouTube. Lots of YouTube stars. People who weren't even around two years ago and you look at them today, they're exploding. Why? Because of their personality. Because of their charm. They're, they have a seducing personality that draws people in. They're likable. And see, again, we're living in a culture. It's all about being liked. It's all about hitting that like button, even on YouTube. Let's hit that like button. It's either like or dislike. It's all about the personality and, and, and charm of an individual. Look, how, look on Facebook how many people take uh, selfies. Hello? 
Look, if you're taking more than two or three selfies a day, then you're probably an arrogant, self-centered individual. Verse 4 here, for certain men, uh, this is Jude again, for certain men have crept in stealthily. And Satan will use these individuals. And see, here's the deal. You will know them by their fruits. This is, Jesus told us this in Matthew chapter 7. Beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. Inwardly, they come to you inwardly just as they come to you dressed as sheep, but inwardly they are as ravenous wolves, vicious wolves. But he he said he gave us a warning. He said we would know them by their fruits. Are you Holy Spirit led? Are you allowing the Holy Spirit to lead your walk, or are you just a professing Christian? Do you just have the form of godliness and denying the power thereof? And see, this is the problem with the church today. Many Christians are rejecting the spirit of Christ. Thus, they lack discernment. Thus, they don't see the fruit of the wolves. They don't see the fruit of false teachers. They don't see the fruit of conceited individuals, narcissistic individuals who come on camera. And it's all about them being liked. It's all about their likability and their personality. I will tell you one thing. I don't come on camera to be liked. I'm going to shoot, I'm going to shoot it to you straight. I'm going, to, I'm going to share you the hard truth. And does my likability and popularity take a hit when I do that? Of course it does. It does regularly. I see uh, when I do messages and, and videos, I see the view count go down almost after every single video I put out on YouTube. Almost every single post I put up on the Facebook, I see the, the like count go down. Because they don't like the hard truth. People don't like the hard truth. They don't want to hear the hard truth. And then that constant fluctuation. Up, down, up, down. Because some people, when they hear the truth, they like it and they, they come. Part, and be part of the page. But then you lose a lot of people. Does that stop me? Does that deter me from preaching the truth? Does that deter me from coming on camera and sharing to you the love of Christ. See, we can talk love, love, love all day long. But if we're not willing to preach the truth, then that love talk is all lip service. And see, many people, they're cool with that. They're cool with lip service. They're cool with their false teachers. They're cool with their false prophecies. They say, well, everybody makes mistakes. Really? Really? Everybody makes, everybody falsely prophesies. Everybody lies on God. Huh, that's very, that's a very interesting statement. Let me continue on here. For certain men have crept in stealthily. And you know, let me make another point. I, we, again, I, I mentioned this earlier, but we have seen an influx of false teacher, women false teachers flowing into YouTube. And see, the enemy is doing this. The enemy is using these women to go after these weak, spineless men who have no backbone, who's been mommified and sissified their whole life, men who have never heard a strong word, men who never had anybody to stand there and correct them and teach them. They're sissified men. And now you got all these women who are now in leadership positions. They've put themselves in leadership positions. Let me say that here on YouTube. They, they have these channels, they have these flocks, they have these followings, and they preach it, sissy. They don't, they, they don't, they don't preach the, the love, the truth of the love of God, the love of the truth of the, the living word of God. And these are the kind of individuals that these men are used to because mommy always coddled them. Mommy always let, let me get away with this and that. And now we have many teachers who are obliging and are just the same way mommy was. And so it's continuing to pull off the men in the church. They're being picked off left and right. Hello? This is what's happening right before our eyes. We have tripled the amount of women here on YouTube as we did three years ago. And these women here, for the most part, for the most part, not all, because there's, there's some very good women teachers out there, but it's very, very few. And there's very, very few good men teachers out there. Point blank, there's very few true teachers out here all together, okay? But what we're seeing is we're seeing men being picked off by these Jezebel false teachers who won't preach truth. And these same very teachers, they hate 
those who stand up and preach truth. They hate the men of God who will stand up in the face of the enemy and in the face of the lies and in the face of heresies and speak truth and contend for the faith. These women hate that. You know, and I give you a perfect example. Last October when I called out that false prophecy. Before it even before the date even came, I called him out and said he was false. And the 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 amount of women that rose up against me, and some of these women, they're right here on YouTube. They have a channel, they have a following, they have people foaming at the mouth over them, and they're popular, they're likable, they're cute, they're subtle, hello, and people are following after them. Huge, huge followings. But these individuals, they didn't, they were upset that basically I stood up and contended for the faith. They didn't like me. And see, that's the spirit of Jezebel right there. That's what Jeze Jezebel tries to run off the man. Hello? Jezebel Ahab, right? See, and we're seeing the picture of that today here in the church. So, as a leader, as someone who preaches the word of God, as someone who teaches the word of God, I've got to contend for the faith. I've got to stand up. And that means, when I stand up, that my likability and popularity will take hits and take hits regularly. Hello, let me continue on here. For certain men have crept in stealthily, gaining entrance secretly by a side door. Satan's not going to show up at your door in a, in a red suit and a pitchfork in his hand. He's going to show up as an attractive young woman. woman. He's going to show up as a young man. He's going to show up as that everyday blue collar worker that reminds you of your dad. He's going to sh he's going to show up as a as a cake baker or a pie baker, just like mommy did back in the old days. And he's going to get to your heart. He's going to tug on your heart. He's going to make you feel good. He's going to be so likable. He's going to be so charming. Mm, he's going to make the hair stand up on your on your arm and he's going to give you nightly dreams. Thus saith the Lord this and thus saith the Lord that. And because of your unwillingness to open up the scriptures, you're going to fall for that garbage hook, line, and sinker. Hello? Today is the day to stop being rebellious. Today is the day to, uh, to stop uh, rejecting God's holy word. Today is the day to stop leaving the scriptures on a shelf somewhere collecting dust. Hello? Today is the day to... Turn off the YouTube camera and get in the secret place. Open up the scriptures and seek the living word of God. Because we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If we refuse to open God's word, don't expect to ever have any faith to stand strong and bold for Jesus Christ. Because it just won't happen. I want to take you now. To Second Peter. Now, this has been a long time coming, this part here, you know, what I'm about to say. This has been a long time coming. You know, I want to be just straightforward with individuals. And I, and I understand that really 99% of, of those out here in YouTube land, they're in delusion. So that means about one out of every hundred people who are watching is in truth and the other 99 is is living in some kind of fairy tale land. Okay, they're 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 living in uh delusion. So Second Peter chapter one Second Peter chapter two, excuse me, this is the amplified version. Verse one, but also in those days there arose false prophets among the people. Just as there will be false teachers among yourselves. This is Paul. He's speaking now to us. Just as there were false teachers among yourselves. Just as there will be false teachers among yourselves. Who will, here we go, subtly and stealthily introduce here we're, heretical doctrines, destructive heresies, even denying and disowning the master who bought them, bringing up on themselves swift destruction. The King James Version says, damnable heresies. Damnable to what? Damnable, damnable to hell. 
So point blank, if you are following false teachers, if you are supporting false teachers and false prophets, you yourself are on your way to hell. You are presently on your way to hell. This is no joke. People make a joke out of this. People have, See, people lack the fear, and when I say fear, I'm talking about the reverence and respect of the Lord. People lack the fear of God. People lack the reverence of the Lord God Almighty. They, they have no reverence of him anymore. Why? Because they're used to mommy raising them, never beating their backside, or, or daddy never beating their backside, letting them get away with anything they wanted to get away with. Because they were not raised in the, in, in the way that they should go, in the Lord. And so they are used to, they think of God the way the, that the way they were parented. Now, some of you out there, you, you had godly parents who, when you got out of hand, they would crack your, your backside with a paddle. Hello? Now, I'm not talking about beating. Okay, there's a difference between beating and correcting. There's a, there's a difference in between uh, 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 rebuking an individual and abusing an individual. Hello? So, understand the difference of what I'm saying. One of the things I never did with my son is I never cussed him out. I never called him names. I never did any of that stuff. I got to the point, here, here's the deal, this is what happened, this is why you're on the wall, bottom line. See, when we start getting our rage involved in correcting, that's when it becomes a huge, huge problem. And we were warned about that in Ephesians, about our anger, not, not being uh, led by our anger and rage. We were warned about that in the book of Ephesians. So we see here in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, that following false te teachings and following heresies will lead us to the lake of fire. But we see, this is a verse that, you know, it's right there in the scriptures. But oddly and sadly, it doesn't uh, often get pointed out. But I'm not afraid to share the word of God with you. This is your responsibility. We all have a personal responsibility and accountability uh of what we're going to do in our life. So when we get before the Lord, this is not going to be a, a group thing. The Lord's not going to pull this group over here and say, hey, group A over here, come to me and, and we're going to all, you know, we're, we're going to sit in a group together and we're going to point fingers at each other. That's not the way it's going to work. When we, we, when we stand before the Lord, it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and it's going to be you one-on-one. On one. And you won't be able to blame so and so over here, this false prophet or this false teacher. It's only going to be you and the Lord. What did you do? And Jesus is going to ask you a question. What did you do with my scripture? What did you do with my Holy Spirit? He's not going to ask, what did you what did you do with the false teacher over here that you were so, you know, mesmerized by? You were so mesmerized by her breast. You were so mesmerized by his beard and his 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 charm and his handsome look see the lord's not going to ask you about booty calls and all that no no he's going to ask you what did you do with his word and with his spirit hello and that booty call stuff that you, that everyone's doing and that a lot of people here on the internet i don't want to say everyone but a lot of people are doing here on the internet they're so they're they're involved with likability and and, and their groups and and their clicks and their flicks and their pricks, all of that garbage ain't going to matter when you're standing before the Lord God Almighty. Now, we can play church all day long. We can come on YouTube and, and giggle around and make a joke out of it. But when it's all said and done, eternity's on the line. And that's something that really we shouldn't think is that all that funny. Now, we should have the joy of the Lord in our life. We should walk in the uh, strength of the Lord. Jesus said that, he didn't say that we're uh, conquerors. He said that we're more than conquerors. So when we walk in the fruit of the Spirit, when we walk after the Lord, when we walk after the Holy Spirit, the, the joy of the Lord becomes our strength. We walk in joy. And so when people come against us, and talk garbage and talk trash. And believe me, I get a ton of that. I get a ton of people talking garbage and talking trash. See, that stuff doesn't get me down. Because why? Why? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. 
So you can come at, at me all day long and say all the garbage you want to say because I've had many people do it and it doesn't phase me one bit. Hello? It doesn't. Hello? So talk your garbage, talk your trash, everything else, whoop de doo I don't care, okay? Because all that stuff comes from the pits of hell. Now, I'm going to take you to Isaiah verse 30. Are you excited about the word of God? Are you excited about what Jesus is doing in your life? Or are you so depressed that you just want out of here? Scotty, break, beam me up. Is it, are you having a Star Trek moment right now where you're just screaming, Scotty, beam me up, get me out, get me out. The devil's beating my butt. The devil's kicking my butt. Get me out of here. Hello, is, is that you today? Or are you, are you screaming at the top of your voice? Jesus, come get me out of here because the devil is kicking my butt. Why? Because I'm being rebellious to you, Lord. I'm ignoring your scriptures. I'm ignoring your word. I'm ignoring your truth. But I am following after your false teachers. Not your false, but I'm, I'm following after Satan's false teachers. Excuse me. I'm following after Satan's false teachers. I'm following after liars. I'm following after false prophets that you didn't send. I'm trusting, I'm putting my trust in them. But here I am rejecting your word. I'm, at, I'm rejecting the true teachers and preachers of the word of God. I mock them and make fun of them. Hello? And then I defend, and when it's, hey, and here's to top it all off, I mock them who teach the truth, and I defend the proven false teachers and prophets. What a joke. Now that is a laugher. Uh, let me take you to Isaiah chapter 30. See, everybody don't want to hear the word. Everybody doesn't want to hear the truth. It, 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 it's, it's comical to see what's happening today. And, you know, well, let me just leave it at that. Let me take you to uh, chapter 30 of Isaiah. I'm reading this out of the Amplified Version. What says, this is verse 1. Woe to the re rebellious children, says the Lord. Hmm, I don't want that to be me. Who take counsel and carry out a plan but not minds. Is that you? That you're, you're taking counsel and you're carrying out plans, but, 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 but they're not plans of the Lord. They're not plans of the Lord God Almighty. And who make a league and pour out a drink offering, but not of my spirit. Thus adding sin to sin. And see, this goes back to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, where Paul says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. See, they're denying the Holy Spirit. They look all churchy. They claim to be a Christian, but yet they're rejecting the Spirit of Christ. Thus, they are not of Christ. Hello? Who set out to go down into Egypt and have not asked me to flee the stronghold of the Pharaoh, of Pharaoh and to strengthen themselves in his strength and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. And see, this nothing new is under the sun. We're seeing this happening all over again. People finding their, their trust in false teachers. People finding, uh, finding their strength. Let me say that. Finding their strength in false teachers. Finding their strength in false prophets. Finding their strength in the world. And then they wonder why a month later, two months later, six months later, that they're depressed. That they're, that they're, that they're, that they're on the edge of breaking. Why? Because they keep forsaking the Lord. They, they refuse to put their trust in the Lord God Almighty. We, we are seeing this play out right here on YouTube. All these individuals putting their trust in false teachers and false prophets and false rapture dates and false this and false that. But as far as those who teach biblical truth, it's crickets. It's the sound of crickets. I had one person say, they, they didn't understand the, the, the meaning of the cricket video that I put up. They didn't get it. And basically, I told them to go back to sleep. Hello, I'm a, look, if you don't get it, then that's, that's, that is the, right there, that is the problem. You need to open your eyes. You, spend less time talking, more time paying attention, okay? A lot of people, they, just, they, 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 they simply don't pay attention to anything. Even things that are right before their very eyes. Let me take you over to verse 9 here. As I begin to end the message here. 
for this is a rebellious people, faithless, lying sons, children who will not hear the law and instruction of the Lord. No, instead of hearing the law and instruction of the Lord, they're hearing somebody's dream. They're hearing somebody's uh, uh, supposed word they got from the Lord. God told me to tell you. Yeah, I bet. Here it is, verse 10, who virtually say to the seers by their conduct, see not. See, they're telling the prophets, prophesy not to us. Yeah, prophesy not to us what is right. Speak to us smooth things. Prophesy deceitful illusions. See, this is what Isaiah spoke of this time. Right here, Isaiah chapter 30, and we're seeing this happening right here today on YouTube. Speak to us smooth things. Don't preach to me the hard truth. Come on camera and be likable. Make me feel good. Be charming. Be subtle. Come on camera. Look, I, 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 want, I want an attractive woman on camera so I can just look at someone to be my eye candy. I'm not coming to YouTube to get the, 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 the truth. I'm not getting the... I don't come here to get the hard truth. I come here for eye candy. I come here for a feel good, for a feel chill. Make, make, give me that chill when my, arm, my hair will stand up on my arms. I want, I want a handsome guy, someone, with the, someone who's charming and makes me feel good, who won't preach truth. A handsome man who refuses to preach the truth. I'm cool with that. I'm not used to a man who comes on camera and, and speaks it bold. I'm used to sissy man. I want a sissy man, a man that I can control, that I can be their puppet master. Hello? See, this is what a lot of, oh my goodness, this is what a lot of individuals, this is happening all around us today. Verse 11, here it is. Get out of the true way. Turn aside out of the truth. Cease holding up before us the Holy One of Israel. We don't want to hear about the Holy One of Israel. We don't want to hear about faith, holiness, and repentance. Preach to us smooth things. Mm. As I uh, share that, finish up that little passage there, I want to take you to uh, 2 Timothy to continue on. You can really connect these two passages right with each other here. I'm going to take you to verse 4 here. Verse 3, I have to say, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, out of the Amplified Version, for the time is coming when people will not tolerate and endure sound, wholesome instruction, but having ears itching for something pleasing and gratifying. Pleasing and gratifying. Right there, that verse is the opposite of Luke 9.23. Instead of uh, taking up their cross and following after Jesus, instead of crucifying the flesh, they're going after what pleases and gratifies them. I encourage you to look up Luke 9, 23, and then compare it to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. The complete contrast of each other. See, this is the time that we're living in. Instead of people crucifying the flesh and taking up their cross and following after Jesus, no, they're following after teachers who are gratifying and pleasing them and telling them things that they want to hear. Hello? For the time is coming when people will not tolerate and endure sound doctrine and wholesome instruction, but having ears itching for something pleasing and gratifying, they will, here it is, gather to themselves one teacher, one YouTube teacher after another to a considerable number. You can, you could throw that in there, right? I mean, so we, because we're seeing it happen right here on YouTube. They will gather to themselves one teacher after another to a considerable number chosen to satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors they hold. I'm going to find me a teacher who says it's cool to shack up. I'm going to find me a teacher who don't, who never even utters the word fornication. I'm going to find me a teacher who tells me it's okay to go out and get a booty call. I'm going to find a teacher who fits my lifestyle where I don't have to change and repent or turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. I will find me a teacher. And then I, I'll get to the throne of God and I'll try to blame it on them. 
But unfortunately, I'm here to tell you it ain't going to work like that. It's going to be a one-on-one, -on -one, you and Jesus. Hello? They will gather to themselves one teacher after another to a considerable number chosen to satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors they hold. Verse 4, here it is. And will turn aside from hearing the truth and wander off into myths and man-made fictions. Wander off into myths and man-made fictions. God told me to tell you that the rapture is going to be this day. God told me to tell you this. God told me to tell you that I'm a prophet. I'm a past. I'm a brother of this. Oh, you know what? Let me bring up another point. I'm getting so tired of people with their titles. Brother this and pastor that and reverend this and sister that and blah, blah, blah. Forget the titles. Jesus don't care about your titles. He don't care about your name tags. All that stuff is garbage. And all these people get, that got these titles in front of their name, I can't even think of one of them who are actually a true teacher or preacher of the word of God. I can't think of one. But they, but they, they have self-proclaimed themselves to be pastor this, brother that, reverend that, reverend this. It's all garbage. It's garbage. Hello? Today is the day to trust the Lord God Almighty. Because... He cannot lie. God can't lie. So why not trust the one who can't lie versus trusting all these individuals who lie through their teeth? I'm going to share one more verse with you. <clears throat> Psalms 138, as I begin to wrap this up. Verse 7 and 8. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch forth your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. Are we going to find that in our false teachers? Are we going to find that in our false prophets? No, we only find that in the Lord God Almighty. Here it is verse 8. Here it is. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me, your mercy, your loving kindness, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of your own hands. And we know in Ephesians that we are, Ephesians 2.10 says that we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in in them walk in what walk in the good works of the holy spirit the fruit of the spirit god has created us to be holy spirit led and filled and to walk in his victory not in delusion and deceit